while the Western media and diplomacy orchestrated against India for buying Russian oil and questioned India's compliance with global sanctions, but the real culprit is the EU. It is the European Union oil and gas companies that are increasingly complying with Russia and taking advantage of the unclear sanctions rules and buying oil and gas in rubles from Moscow. It is also worth noting that the EU has been unable to impose the sixth package of sanctions announced by President Ursula von der Leyen in early May because member states have yet to agree on a ban on Russian oil imports. Russia is the world's third largest oil producer behind the US and Saudi Arabia. According to the International Energy Agency, the bulk of Russia's 11.3 billion barrels a day production in January 2022 was crude oil, that is, 10 million barrels a day. While refined oil products accounted for 960,000 barrels and liquid natural gas 340,000 barrels a day. Although ranked third among oil producing nations, the IEA says that, in terms of all oil products, Russia is the world's largest exporter to global markets and the second largest crude oil exporter after Saudi Arabia. The EU is more reliant on Russian oil than the United States and the United Kingdom and continues to remain the biggest importer of Russian oil and gas importing as much as three-fourths of all Russian fossil fuel exports collectively. Russia had mandated that payments for gas be made in rubles for companies based in unfriendly countries. And it appears that EU countries are increasingly complying with Russian requirements for payments for Russian gas supply in rubles. And recent reports from Europe indicate that a large number of companies from several EU member countries are meeting these requirements. In simple terms, this is a euro-ruble arrangement, as it entails opening two bank accounts, one in rubles and one in euros, in the Russian Gazprom Bank, which is not included among the banks sanctioned by the EU. The payments are made in euros, which are then converted to rubles at the bank. Companies from Austria, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Slovakia and Slovenia are among those that are doing so. And the list of such companies is growing by the day. Only Poland, Bulgaria and Finland have refused to comply with Moscow's demand. It's also worth noting that the European Commission has refused to say whether such ruble payments made by EU companies are in violation of EU sanctions laws or not. It's possible that this avoidance was done on purpose. It leaves the door open for business as usual, even after sanction, for these EU countries which are heavily reliant on Russian gas. So, despite the sanctions, Russia's monthly earnings from selling oil and fossil fuels to the EU have nearly doubled. Rather than questioning how these companies obtain Russian oil, much of the Western media focuses on Indian oil purchases and they continue to report that India and Russia are attempting to establish a rupee-ruble payment mechanism in order to conduct bilateral trade. And as these companies continued to pay for Russian gas through a euro-ruble arrangement, it is not surprising that the Russian ruble is strengthening against the major currencies. As Western sanctions push up oil prices, resulting in even higher prices at the pump, the EU citizens, homes, jobs and wallets are also all being impacted. And this could lead to more social inequality, a rise in unemployment and an increase in energy poverty. So it is clear that the EU's game with Russia is wreaking havoc on smaller, weaker economies, while also causing global instability. Russia previously has warned that banning its oil would lead to catastrophic consequences for the global market. And it appears that these sanctions aren't just hurting Russia's economy, but also having an impact on the lives of European citizens. Clearly, Russians are laughing at the EU's approach to obtaining oil, while Ukraine is being bombarded with bombs and missiles.